Hello and welcome to BW Business World. Uh, we have with us today Sachin Trivedi, who's Senior Vice President and Fund Manager and Head of Research at UTI Mutual Fund. Thank you so much for joining us today, Sachin. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you, Anirudha, for uh, inviting me to your uh, channel. Thanks. Thanks for taking time out. Uh, Sachin, we've had a very uh, volatile kind of a market uh, uh, phase over the last two, three months. Needless to say, we have been following it. Even today and over the last couple of sessions, in fact, markets have been coming off their highs. The Nifty's cracked 180 odd points today. Uh, what do you make of it? Uh, do you think we've, we've crossed the hump when it comes to the, the intense bearish uh, scenario that we witnessed hardly three, four months back? Or do you think we're going to go back to those kind of levels once reality sinks in and this is just a liquidity fuel kind of a relief rally? Broadly speaking, what's your take? No, so, good part. So, uh, uh, we have observed this kind of uh, doomsday kind of reaction by the investors uh, and which is where you see some sharp corrections that we have seen in this market, uh, let's say somewhere between uh, February to March. Uh, and then we have again seen the sharp recovery. So, uh, this is this is obviously a reaction to a particular uh, particular situation which we have not. So, for us, at, at least for us, the living uh, living kind, uh, this is one of kind of event, and this is not necessarily a, a cycle business cycle related uh, you know, situation. But then we should remember that uh, let's say. Uh, uh, a temporary, let's say, if I were to call it, it's not a business cycle, but uh, also we should realize that maybe even if the companies were to actually lose out one whole year of uh, earning for them, uh, it's not it's not a very big deal for them. But uh, the, the, the fact is that uh, if some companies will really find it in uh, themselves in trouble if the balance sheets are not in place. But, uh, but just to come back to the point about the market reaction, uh, my sense is that obviously uh, this is also to some extent also government imposed uh, 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 shutdown that has happened and which is where the uh, markets were forced to react to that and then soon as soon as they, uh, the things started to normalize we have again seen not just in India but across the globe we have seen normalization taking place. Uh, now to your question whether uh, whether we will go go and test the test the thing again. My sense is that some amount of correction was also overreaction, and all this is also related. Uh, this is also uh, resulted in some some level of technical reaction in the market. Okay. So, uh, uh, so maybe the kind of lows that we have seen in oil and couple of other commodities. I don't think we will again retest them. But uh, yeah, my sense is that uh, the, the the volatility is part and parcel of the equity market that will continue to remain. Uh, uh, and and as we keep testing the reality, people will uh, keep reacting. But then we should also remember that uh, there is a huge uh, liquidity which has been infused in the market, yes. and that will actually keep markets afloat. So broadly speaking, you think we are at least we won't be testing those kind of levels again. We are over the hump when it comes to that. So we might see volatility and corrections, but you uh, you propagate a buy and uh, buy on dips kind of a, uh, an approach right now. Would you yeah, use so, corrections uh, to build positions and equities or to book profits? Yeah, so uh, just as an uh, uh, just as in principle, we should always keep in mind any sharp correction is a good opportunity for us to go and invest in the companies which we were finding it attractive. Obviously, the necessary condition here is that uh, these are sound sound businesses. So we are not trying right. to uh, suggest to uh, your viewers or our investors that they should be going and playing it for short term. Here, all the advices are for the longer term perspective and uh, within that long term perspective, if you found the stocks to be attractive uh, in past, uh, so uh, this is a good opportunity for them to go and invest and which is where it's, it's so uh, although the, the previous question uh, we were discussing that there is a sharp reaction uh, uptick in the market, but then I was checking a couple of numbers. So from February till now, uh, uh, maybe on let's say BSE 200, which is a slightly wider index. If you see the performance, maybe markets are uh, let's say flattish in the zone, but then there are more than 50% of the companies are still in negative zone. And mind you, the good amount of contribution still comes from those top 10 companies from the index contribution perspective. So a right. uh, uh, couple of names continue 
to dominate that position so from that perspective if you look at there are still a lot of opportunity for investors in the market in fact there has been some kind of divergence which is now happening when mid cap the mid caps are now rising despite there being some kind of profit booking in the nifty so you think that there is a juice in these mid caps right now of course they've been correcting all the way since 2018 and uh, every time we think now this is the time that it's going to start spiking up there is something new that happens to to kind of crush uh, hopes of mid cap investors but there is some degree of divergence i've been seeing over the last few trading sessions do you think people are turning bullish on mid caps right now and is this uh, like you said going beyond the top 10 20 stocks is this the time to start accumulating but on a stock specific basis good businesses like you said yeah so yeah it's a good point so in your question you also pointed out that uh, let's say uh, <clears throat> beginning 2018 uh, the mid cap and the small cap index has seen a significant correction so just to give you some numbers so let's say uh, for the uh, for the mid cap index uh, let's say uh, in in around that time so uh, 30th of december or around uh, 2017 uh, this index was trading at 30% premium to uh, to the large cap uh, uh, index and now uh, so uh, just before let's say uh, uh, somewhere around december time of uh, 2020 or uh, 2019 uh, this index has uh, really corrected uh, a lot and it has come uh, come down to the discount levels Post that we've still seen started seeing some level of activity in the mid cap and the small cap space, but then the whole uh, pandemic has hit us, and which is where uh, you've seen some amount of uh, or big amount of underperformance again restarting in this uh, this space. Uh, but uh, from the fundamental perspective, uh, and this is our observation based on some of the database that we have seen uh, for the mid and small cap. Uh, uh, space to really do well obviously there are opportunities and even i am suggesting there are good businesses where we will we continue to find opportunities but we should again remember that this is one space where you need a good amount of uh, industrial the business activity the economic activity has to be in a in a zone which is very positive uh, that's where you will see that the risk on in these businesses will strike the ability of these companies to go invest in the business really increases again and this is the time when uh, these companies start to really flourish and uh, start to give outsized returns so that's that's one factor uh, we should keep in mind so here i'm suggesting maybe from valuation timing perspective uh, this could be a good time god uh, none of us know when the business cycle will turn uh, so that's but when when you frame your horizon you have to keep this perspective in mind waiting for the long term don't punt or trade any of these stocks at the moment yes excellent uh, Sachin, you're somewhat of a subject matter expert on the auto sector and you run the UTI Transportation Logistics Fund which has been around for, for a very long time and is a, is a flagship fund of your AMC. Uh, now, uh, I have two questions on the sector. One, there's been so much talk of late and over the last few years about the sector itself going through a paradigm shift that uh, more and more millennials are now choosing not to buy vehicles and there will be some sort of a reinvention of the sector altogether and uh, people will uh, stop buying so many cars and uh, and this has been a trend uh, over the last few years that a lot of people are foregoing car ownership for other goals in their life and uh, that's one question are we really on the verge of some kind of a tectonic shift when it comes to the sector itself secondly the impact of the covid pandemic uh, we've seen hyundai posting uh, decent numbers i think in terms of auto sales last month and are there green shoots now showing up for the sector at least in the short run it's taken a terrible beating since march as we all know uh, so these two questions uh, such and one are we on the verge of a broad paradigm shift which will reinvent the sector altogether and change the way these companies are forced to operate and secondly, uh, in the short to medium term, do you think consumption will pick up again within the sector? Will people start taking advantage of the lower interest rate regime to start purchasing vehicles at this point? What's your take, Sachin? So, yeah, uh, the, from the structural demand perspective, uh, I think uh, maybe in some of the really developed countries, this is the trend that we have seen. Um, that uh, the younger generation is not preferring to own a vehicle. Uh, even in back in India, in some of the con congested cities, people have started preferring uh, shared mobility. 
uh so no, definitely this is this is the trend that we have observed before the pandemic hit and again now there is this uh, uh pandemic is forcing people to uh, maybe at least the secondary data is suggesting that people are looking to <clears throat> purchase uh, their own vehicle uh, uh but the most important part is the affordability and which is where i would want to draw your attention just to if we were to talk about the car penetration in india so it's true for some of the developed countries where the penetration is really high whether you look at from per thousand people or if you look at from household perspective but when we look at from india's perspective the penetration is <clears throat> uh, just below 3% so uh, <clears throat> there is a lot more room uh, for us to actually increase our penetration <clears throat> even today a uh, large part of our uh, sales happen only in metro cities so if i am not wrong uh, uh, top uh, top 10 cities would be contributing anywhere between 45 to 50% of the overall sales uh, but the real growth before pandemic and even now you would have heard reports the real growth is now coming from uh, these tier 3 tier 4 towns or in the rural areas where uh, the re- fundamental reason behind this uh, growth coming back in these areas is the income generation and i'm quite confident uh when the income starts to grow faster than the cost of vehicle so uh, one of the fundamental reason just to point out the even before pandemic hit us and in last 3 months we have seen complete collapse of the sales but even before that in uh, let's say fy uh, especially in fy 20 uh, we have seen worst ever fall in demand in last 4 decades it is not 1 2 3 5 years but uh, so this across the category we have seen a paradigm shift or not whether we are on the verge of a paradigm shift perfect 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 but but our sense is that um, so there were there were a couple of fundamental factors which were so maybe that's the trend in future who knows that's a time only time will tell but as of now our reading is that one uh, <clears throat> there were certain categories especially the sme sector uh, which was finding it challenging because we all know the challenges uh, the smes have been already facing uh, then uh, the cost increase in let's say two wheeler four wheeler because of the multiple regulatory changes so uh, there was a regulation on uh, insurance side that you need to have compulsory 3 and 5 year uh, third party registration you need to have personal accident insurance for that then there were safety regulations so all the cars now need to have that abs uh, you need to have the at least in the front the safety airbags uh, even in the two wheeler there was a abs related change so whole host of regulations which have kicked in and which has increased the price of the vehicle so uh in some of the some of the two wheelers the price has gone as high as 20% over a period of two years so that's the transition we have seen so from bs3 to bs4 bs4 to bs6 uh so uh, that's actually has gone not so uh, uh, uh good with the uh, uh, consumers who are already facing income challenges and which is where we have seen the shock so large amount of this uh, um, uh, uh, the challenge to the value uh, to the volume has also come because of these shocks yeah maybe the trend will tell us that uh, 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 you maybe you're right in pointing out but it's only the time will tell because these are the long uh, long drawn trends that uh, uh, will gradually kick in but then again as i said that there is a penetration story which is very much there in india especially How in the rural tier 3 tier 4 and the rural is the future uh, looking bright for the sector especially passenger vehicles and so yeah from the volume perspective definitely my sense is that we have bottomed out from the volume perspective especially that what we have seen in last 3 months and uh, we should also keep in mind when we look at the valuations of some of these companies the valuations are challenging not just that the volume has gone down but the ability of the because your whole operating matrix has gone for a toss and plus the companies also have to give higher discounts to attract customer so from the profit margin perspective most of them are sitting at uh, really low levels and which is where you will start to find out that as the volume kicks in you will also start to get in the operating leverage and which is where there is a potential for some of these companies to do well so in a nutshell it's a, this as a sector it's a good contrarian bet would you say it's a value bet at the moment people should be adding to a portfolio yes my sense yes my sense is yes uh, this is a sector which will uh as 
as we start to normalize we will uh, obviously get the normalized volume level but over a period of time as we start to build up uh, income and uh, we all remember india is a growth country uh, so uh, when you start to kick in and we should all remember we have forgotten that the j curve effect so as we so today we are in the ballpark of 2000 uh, dollars as far as uh, india per capita is concerned when yeah. we have observed uh, so as as some of the countries uh, as some of the countries in past both the emerging as well as emerged countries we've seen that they cross certain threshold of around uh, close to 3000 dollars is when you see the j curve effect so as we keep growing uh, i think there at some point in time we will also hit that j curve in india excellent great insights uh, sachin uh, another i mean we need to also dissect the banking sector a little bit at the moment uh, there's a lot of talk about uh, the, the september shock or some moratorium is lifted uh, people are talking about npas doubling and uh, com- banks will have to be recapitalized both public and private uh, how big is this hole really is it a sinkhole that is uh, that is going to really collapse the entire banking sector or do you think it's a hump that we're going to get past Do you think banks will be recapitalized and move past this, and and the whole moratorium effect and the NPA uh, which will flow from there is being exaggerated to an extent? Uh, and do you think that it's it's really not as bad as it's being made to look at uh, uh, look? What's your take? Once we cross the September, and let's assume that the regulator actually doesn't step in, and uh, there is no uh, there is no further extension, and uh, maybe from the healthy uh, uh, system perspective. Uh, you need to have the right policies in place uh, but let's say if there is if there is uh, no such extension which takes place then uh, that's the time we will test the system uh, and clearly uh, that is one space where we are also uh, been a bit cautious uh, especially the lending space is where we are cautious but uh, even from the preparedness perspective uh, when you see some of the private sector banks uh, clearly despite so when you see uh, some of them we started raising capital uh this the motor number uh, really coming in the high single digit for them to the last quarter uh, and uh, uh, having a higher tier capital it does suggest uh, to us that maybe uh, 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 they they are preparing themselves for any eventualities uh but then uh, uh we should from the investment perspective we should keep in mind uh is that uh if there is if there is a uh, uh, opportunity in this sector we are always better off uh, staying with some of the better capitalized companies rather than one with the weaker capital structure again uh, we should also keep in mind is that for the whole space one of the important factor is the liability franchise so that's again another factor we should all keep in mind that wherever the liability franchise is uh, is good uh, that's the space where we should all be in because for some of the good a problem for them today is uh, uh, is is that they're uh, flushed with the liquidity right so uh, maybe uh, uh, the question which you are asking is that uh, do we have a bigger hole uh um, it's only the banking system or the rbi will have a better hang of that uh, number uh, but uh, but yeah maybe at some point in time uh, government will also have to step in to recapitalize some of the psu space uh, because from the economic perspective remember we should uh, always be having a healthy banking system for us to actually restart the whole cycle again uh, and 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 yeah that's one space where we are cautious Will be overweight, underweight, or uh, basically neutral banks at this point. At this point in time. So, in the ho- overall financial space, uh, maybe if I were to say that our priority would remain uh, in a non-lending space, uh, which would be again followed by within the lending space, it would be uh, in the uh, well-capitalized private sector banks. And again, as I said um, clearly, for us, the for us, the two things matter is the good capital. Uh, which is the uh, uh, the tier one, tier two capital for the company uh, or the bank, and second thing is a good liability franchise. And again, uh, some of the banks with better systems, processes, well tested uh, uh, credit cost for them are the one where we would be focused on rather than uh, trying our hands with uh, uh, some of the fancy names. Fantastic! Very, very some excellent insights from you, Sachin. So, summing up uh, the advice you've given to our viewers today. 
markets are going to be volatile you you don't see them uh, going back to that march levels but they will remain volatile this is a buy on dips kind of a market you are advising people to start accumulating uh, in a bottom up kind of a way good companies do not trade this is not a traders market uh, auto sector you're saying is looking good from the medium term and uh, from a valuation standpoint is probably a good contrarian bet as well within the banking space you probably be more circumspect and you would possibly uh, look at only the big names and you would avoid uh, companies which which are which don't have as sound as business practice as they should have um, excellent such an any closing uh, comments or words of advice for our viewers on investing into equity and mutual funds at this uh, juncture sure so i my only uh, words for the investor would be always look at equity from asset allocation perspective so form your uh, asset allocation well in advance uh, and uh, stick to your uh, uh, stick to your plans for to achieve your goals uh, and remember whenever there is a correction in the equity market naturally your allocation towards equity will go down that's the time you should be actually increasing your allocation towards equity but again remain goal focused uh, stick to your plans and always think equity from longer term perspective brilliant thank you so much once again sachin for joining us and thank you, you have a great day thank you sir